Hi everyone, and welcome to the ACW three one two zero. Today our topic is uh, the cash flow statement. Cash flow statement is just like any other component, like uh, annual reports. It's a part of annual report which is presented by almost every company throughout every year or quarter even. So it is presented side by side with any other annual report, like uh, statement of financial position, statement of comprehensive income, uh, statement of changes in equity. So this is one of the most important part of the annual report, which is called cash flow statement. So already you are doing some group assignments, so you got an idea like how the cash flow statement looks like. Now uh, the discussion is why it is so much important to learn about the cash flow statement. Of course, it's an annual report. And how to prepare the cash flow statement? Why the cash flow statement is in FA3, Financial Accounting 3, is because uh, it has to have the knowledge, as a student, it has to have a knowledge about the annual reports. So cash flow statement is prepared after you have a comprehensive knowledge regarding the balance sheet, which is called statement of financial position and uh, profit loss statement, like statement of comprehensive income. So if I have these two statements and a uh, statement of changes in equity, I can easily prepare the statement of cash flows. Uh, statement of cash flows has three activities, which is I already mentioned in your group assignment as well. So what are those three activities? How we differentiate those three activities with the, with the rest of the things? So first of all, the object of this mini lecture is to make you understand how the cash flow statement looks like. If you haven't check it out in the annual report of the other companies, then the formatting, you need to get familiar with the formatting, so overall formatting. That's the first thing we need to do. Then the activities. So there are three activities. Uh, that is operating, investing, and financing. And uh, we will discuss like what is the different components included in this cash flow statement. Cash flow statement is dealt by International Accounting Standard Number no. Seven. When I was doing bachelor, it was still the International Accounting Standard no. Seven. It never changed throughout the years. Yeah, there are some adjustments, uh, more or less, in introducing a new cash flow like. At my time, there was no adjustment for acquiring any subsidiary, but now we have it. Uh, there was less adjustments about the intangibles. Uh, now we have these adjustments in the cash flow statement. So there are a few developments which happen from year to year. So in the last 10, 20 years, cash flow statement has become a broader expect because this is the main component of the annual report. Then we discuss about how we how we deal with the invest interest receive and dividend receive and pay. It is normally discretionary to you, like uh, for the companies whose solo business is interest, how they should treat it, and the companies whose solo business is receiving a paying dividend, how they should take, treat this uh, in the cash flow statement. So we talk about the adjustment of this. Next is, uh, which I'm not showing in this uh, slides, but I will solve this question separately. We need to do some understanding and adjustment of the inventory, uh, receivables, payables, accruals, and disposal of any tangible assets. Can be intangible assets as well and tangible both. So the difference between so far is that the tangible are depreciated and they have a depreciation and accumulated depreciation. Uh, which belongs to International Accounting Standard Number 16, which you already study in, I think, FA2. Uh, in this class, you will later on will study about the intangibles, where instead of depreciation, we charge amortization, and that is charged on intangibles. So disposal of uh, PPE, property plant equipment, and intangibles. Both are discussed in this accounting standard. So we will do this five adjustment and we will record this cash transaction into the cash flow statement. So these are the main objectives of this. Um, there is a detailed lecture slides, which is um, which is I just copy and uh, taken from the publisher and pay, uh, put it there. Um, you can read those slides. That is more about like what the cash flow is for, what is the purpose of the cash flow, in which condition we use the cash flow. Normally, it's uh, one of the main component. And then they are, there are a lot of theoretical discussion on that on that slides. But I believe that uh, since cash flow statement is all about adjustments, so I should spend more time on the actual adjustments. Now, 
Number one slide is about the activities of the cash flow. So as I discussed earlier, this is the part of your group assignment where you need to prepare uh, and compare the operating, investing, and financial activity of a company uh, during and COVID and pre-COVID. So like comparing with 2019 with 2020. But a question arises, uh, what is the operating activities? What is the investing activities? What is the financing? What, what we call activities means itself, the activity means what? Actually, uh, the cash flow statement has these three major components. Again, these three major components are taken from three annual reports. One is uh, balance sheet, statement of comprehensive income. Second is profit loss account or what we call profit loss statement, uh, statement of comprehensive income. And the third is statement of changes in equity. So all these transactions or all these uh, items which is categorized in three, these three annual reports, uh, in these three annual accounts, uh, that will be taken and reported in the cash flow statement based on the which activities they belong to. So for ease of understanding, what I do, I copy and take some of the uh, activities which, is, which can be a part of this operating activities, investing activities and financing activities. So you can read that, uh, but definitely I will give more discussion in the later on slides. So this is my notes. This is how I do it, my bachelor, uh, why, why having my own tips, like how I can understand um, this cash flow statement more easily. Um, so for example, I have three statements which I discussed earlier. One is our balance sheet. Balance sheet has on one side is the assets and other side is the equity and uh, then liability. So assets are uh, current and non-current. Liability is also short-term and long-term. Short-term liability is current, uh, non-current. Then we have an equity part. This part is also a statement of changes in equity. Then on the other end, we have a profit and loss account, which is, more or less about the expenses. So what are the different expenses available in that? And a little bit part is about the dividend interest rate, which is a part of a profit loss. So I'm not going to discuss that one. Now. We will discuss in a separate slide how we treat the interest and the dividend receive and paid uh, with these activities. So if you do not understand and cannot categorize which activities go where, or uh, you find it very difficult, then I will highly encourage you that you should follow this pattern. So the first activity, uh, operating activities. Operating activities consist of all the expenses available in the profit loss account. So expense part, normally accruals are part of it so that we deal with the operating activities. Um, and you will find a few more expenses I will detail our later on. Second is uh, the current assets. So the current assets means, uh, for example, your inventory or your receivable, which is called debtors. Um, so these are deal in our, in our current assets. So any activities, any cash you gain or pay for cash only cash items, which is in the current assets, uh, that will be a part of operating activities. And Current liability, in current liabilities, we have the adjustment for payable. So that's also a part of this operating activity. So in the balance sheet, if I say uh, current assets and current, this current assets and current liability, these two are the major part which will go to this uh, operating activities. So any cash I receive from the receivables, any cash I pay to the payables, any inventory I buy from the cost of goods sold, the cash items only will be treated as um, part of operating activities. Then the investing activities, uh, that's pretty much uh, straightforward. They only deal with the non-current assets. Non-current assets are the long-term asset, uh, like building, uh, like machinery, like anything you buy or you sell, or you find any uh, profit on it, or if you get any cash from the from the selling of that non-current assets. So. Adjustment of the non current is also available in later on slides. Um, if you buy any subsidiary, 
that's also acquire any subsidiary so that will be your cash outflow you're paying cash to buy and subsidiary so that's a part of investing activities so investing activities is more or less about a non-current asset which is you also call a long-term assets um, how the international accounting standard number 16 uh, uh, property plant and equipment define it a non-current asset is an asset who has a useful life more than one year so if if the life is more than one year, yeah, it's considered that property plant equipment. Uh, you already in effort to discuss uh, in, in very much length about the depreciation concept. So all those assets. And in this class, you will study the intangibles, which is quite similar like this, like a goodwill is one of the intangible assets and few more. So we'll discuss how we're going to treat them, how we're going to apply the amortization on these assets. What will the amortization schedule, just like you have a depreciation schedule. So these are the few things we will discuss in the upcoming lectures. The last one is the financing activity. So financing activities is the activities which normally deal in the long-term borrowing and statement of changes in equity. So statement of changes in equity is normally like if you issue a share, you get a buyback, you get a bonus, you got a bonus share pay or something like that. Any activities which is pertaining to the statement of changes in equity will be the part of the financing activity. Now, I detail out what activities could be. And these are just examples. This is not fixed, but few of the things which you'll find like dividend received, interest paid is written in here, which is our operating activity slide. And uh, this is our current assets received from the customer. Uh, payment to the supplier and employee uh, expense, expense to profit and loss account. Cash generated from operations, also profit and loss account. Income tax pay is expense, which is profit and loss account. So you can see from some of the items from current assets are current liabilities. Payment to the supplier is current liability. So current asset, current liability, and the expenses of profit and loss account, which I discussed earlier. If you really want to understand or feel which category belongs to which uh, activity. So this is one of the tips uh, I'm providing you in this uh, video. Next is uh, investing activities. So as I discussed earlier, they are more into non-current assets like depreciation assets or the intangible assets. So buy any property, sell any property, uh, then you write the interest receive and dividend receive or interest pay or dividend pay. So it's written here. Nothing to worry now. I will discuss in the last slide why we write it here. Another thing is about the debt, uh, it's about the subsidiary. If you buy any subsidiary and you pay a long money on that, so you will get a net uh, cash flow from this activity called investing activity. Uh, the next is, and the last is financing activities. Financing activities, normally you can see about the shares, about the long term borrowing, so non current assets. So it is about the statement of changes in equity and the non-current liability. So this is a non-current, if you have a long-term borrowing, you pay back or you receive a cash on the long-term uh, non-current liability or the long-term borrowing or long-term liability, that's payment or receive come under this uh, category along with the statement of changes in equity. So overall, if I want to pack it up, into a category wise, I will go back to my slides. I will have a look on what tips I have provided you. Uh, those tips will be very useful for you to categorize any any uh, activities, which activity should, should go where. So this is 19.3. It's not available in your lecture slides. I take it from your book and I copy and paste it here. So those students who haven't buy the book, this, this um, example, this exhibit is very, very nice. The moment I see this one, I thought like, whoa, they almost list on all the possible examples, which should be possible, you know, in order to prepare a cash flow statement. So while copy and pasting, I cannot copy paste the cash flow statement as of uh, 2020 or whatsoever, but the main focus is this. So each activity is, is given some of the example and then they put the cash at the beginning and then you come up with the cash at the end. So for example, for the operating activities, you have for the customer receipt, employees, operation, interest received, paid, or tax. Then you sum them all and write down the net cash uh, in the operating activities. 
then you have the acquisition of the subsidiary again for the investing activities second activities uh, which belongs to if you acquire any subsidiary you pay a cash so cash outflow you purchase any equipment so cash outflow cash outflow is show in the sign of parathesis there are brackets on both end then you receive any cash from selling an uh, asset so point to be noted here is they are putting the the cash you receive from selling they are not putting in the gain they are not they are not putting the gain on the assets profit loss they are not doing that they are only putting the cash you receive from selling of assets so cash flow statement is all about cash they are they do not deal with the non cash items if you have a gain or profit in terms of non cash it doesn't matter however if you have a dividend or something which you pay you do we write it down if you have a depreciation amortization or something it's not available in cash flow because it's a non cash items so some of the interest and the dividend we write down here then we talk about the uh, financing activities is if you receive any cash from issuing your capital if you receive any cash from the long term borrowing if you make a payment for the financial lease oh yeah that, that will be next lecture about discussing like what is a financial lease and operating lease financial lease is a lease in a very short term that uh, if you lease out an asset by the end of lease period the asset uh, ownership will be transferred to you it's called financing lease another you buy an asset but it will not or never will transfer out your ownership to you is called operating lease so there are two types of lease so here since this is going to be our assets any liability you pay which is uh, which you buy like you buy a car on a lease and by the end of this lease period the ownership will be transferred to you is called financing lease and you make a installment monthly installment or the or the yearly payment on the financial lease so that's also a part of it any dividend pay so you can see dividend pay is written here uh, interest paid is written here okay they can also write down the dividend pay uh, interest receive is written here on the other end a dividend receive is written on this side so you can see it's it's kind of a like this will be my next slide is is up to you the discretion of the company wherever they want to consider the interest receive and the dividend pay is up to you so it can be fall in any category you like so if i'm marking your paper and you write the interest receive in operating activities and another student write in the investing activities is okay uh, because it depend on the discretion as the standards say discretion of the company so they will deal with it so we sum it all all the sums from each activity which we write here 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 total net net cash we receive is 1110 million that is a net increase in cash and cash equipment that's a cash inflow then what we do we write down the opening cash balance that is a cash balance from for example this is a 2023 so we write a uh, 2022 closing cash balance in the cash flow statement and after we have a net cash we write down this last year cash we sum this two and we will come up with a cash and cash equivalent for 2023 this must be equal to to your cash flow or cash account so our bank account so bank account and this if it uh, tally like a balance sheet if it is tally if these are equal so you are you have a right answer so while solving a question in the examination if you want to know whether your answer is right or not your cash at the end of the year or by the end of the cash flow statement should be equal to the cash account at the end of the balance sheet so i will show you this uh, in the upcoming questions so next is uh, about the dividend and the interest if you have a dividend and interest or pay or receive or something uh, different opinions are there but you can write down in any category you like normally if we talk about the banks banks primary business is to receive interest and in cash so if they receive any interest it can be their operating activity because this is their operations for some other companies who who do not deal with the interest receive or payment as their primary business um, any manufacturing company or textile company so they do not need they won't write in operating activities they can write 
this interest receive as an investing activity because maybe you receive this interest while investing in a company or any other shares. Uh, so it's the discretion. It's discretionary for the for the for the companies to write down or categorize or classify uh, into these three activities. So that's pretty much it. I will come back to you with a short answers and questions on how to do the adjustment for the inventory, fixed assets, and how we calculate this adjustment for the cash flow statement.